G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Draw with Jazza. I'm Jazza and this is a video tutorial on how to create interesting characters. I have a couple of things to preface with. The first is that the theme of this tutorial was voted on by you guys and if you're interested in voting on the theme of a future tutorial make sure to check out the link on the screen and in the description right now and go vote. And the other thing I wanted to mention is that this is not a video on how to draw interesting characters. I've done a lot of different content on character design uh, and a lot of visual stuff so if you're interested in that sort of thing make sure to go watch my video on the character design process. Furthermore, there's an ebook I made called Draw with Jazza Fun with Faces, which you can go check out as well with a link on the screen and in the description, which goes through a whole bunch of different things, including stuff that I'm going to talk about today. But it's all about the visuals and how to draw interesting characters. Today, we're going to be specifically talking about inventing characters and how to conceptualize and create character ideas. And this video is hopefully going to be interesting to people who consider themselves hobbyists or or professionals as writers or artists or comic book artists or even people who are super nerdy like myself and like playing tabletop role-playing games. I don't consider myself an authority on this theme but uh, it is something I do a lot as a hobbyist and enthusiast uh, and I do a lot of professional work in animation and as such have done a lot of character conceptualization so I'm hoping to offer some interesting points to you today. And today we're gonna go through four helpful tools that you can can use when conceptualizing your own characters to help make them interesting and memorable and fun. These four things are stereotypes, flaws, inhibitions and motives and we're going to go through all of these one by one starting off with stereotypes. Stereotypes are often the most obvious place to start when coming up with your character concepts. Stereotypes or cliches as some people might call them are essentially character types that we come to expect of certain roles or certain demographics or genres and the reason stereotypes are useful and often used is because we as the viewer when we see a stereotype stereotype or cliche character automatically make assumptions about that character. An example of a character stereotype that you might come across in say a medieval setting would be a chivalrous knight part of a noble order. I am Sir Fadim in the fourth of the Order of the Sun. An example of a modern character stereotype would be an extremely powerful rich New York banker. My name's Peter Banks, which is either ironic or coincidence or providence, considering I am one of New York's most successful bankers. And then if we throw ourselves into a totally different demographic, another stereotype would be a common street thug or thief. My name's Gary, just Gary. Sell drugs, buy some occasionally, and uh, beat up people when I'm paid to. At a glance, when your audience is introduced to a seemingly cliche or stereotypical character, their brain is hardwired to make assumptions, to assume things about their personality, their setting or their wants and desires or their character traits. This can be extremely useful to you, the creator, because you can take the knowledge of those stereotype expectations and throw them on their heads. I get a rush out of murdering people in their sleep. So that by morning, the commoners are scrambling about accusing each other, and I have a front row seat to chaos. I maintain a tough exterior to stay at the top of the industry, but uh, truth be told, I hate my job. I stay here because it's obviously incredibly good money, and if I didn't have that, I wouldn't be able to manage the homeless shelters and be able to support the veterans and orphans like I do. But if my colleagues knew about all that, I wouldn't be at the top of my job, so kind of a catch-22. I, uh, I really like puppies, like a lot. By flipping the audience's expectations on their head, we all of a sudden make them pay attention and often flipping character stereotypes around and using these cliches and breaking them and manipulating them to your advantage can be a really useful tool to create memorable and interesting characters. 
The second point I want to talk about is creating flawed characters. Characters that have no flaws are boring. And I don't just mean characters without flaws who are squeaky clean and super good like this guy here. You can also have a villain who is too good at being a villain and therefore uninteresting because we know what to expect. So if you have a character who's either virtuous or villainous, it's more interesting to make them so in the extreme to the point where it's too much and too flawed or not enough and there are gaps there they can't quite be good enough at being the hero or the villain there are so many great examples of characters who are flawed and are interesting because they are flawed but just to name a few we have characters like indiana jones who though he is the hero and though he always comes out on top has phobias and is really aggressive and sometimes rude to people then there's philip j fry who has an extreme lack of intellectual capacity. Then we have characters like the duo Walter White and Jesse Pinkman, both of which have really good motives sometimes and really bad motives or actions at other times just because of their own personal desires and character flaws. They're really interesting characters and they play off each other really well too because of their flaws. And then we have a character like Tyrion Lannister who has personal issues with alcoholism and whoring and daddy issues and let's not dig too deep there. And then there's the fact that he is in a position of authority or in a family with authority and respect but he has physical limitations due to his dwarfism obviously not seen as very good by those in his family and some of those around him character flaws are interesting they're good they're fun to play with try and experiment and have fun let go of your own inhibitions and desires to create the perfect character and create the perfect imperfect character when peace reigns i have no importance yet i am in a position to make people desperate for my intervention. That and some people claim I have an unquenchable superiority complex. I hate myself. I know I have to appear tough and uh, successful to be doing what I do, but the reality is sometimes alcohol is the only thing that numbs the soul-crushing disparity enough and the self-loathing that comes with doing what I do to keep me sane. I lie a lot. And that's the truth. Like, I can't help it. Like, I don't even know I'm doing it half the time. So when you invent your characters, try and give them some really disabling personal characteristics. Give them faults and flaws, cracks and scars. Whether they be emotional or physical, they make your character interesting and affect the way that they act and interact with the world and setting around them. As a side note on the idea of building flawed characters, you might be interested to know that I am a bit of a nerd in my spare time and I play tabletop role-playing games like Dungeons and Dragons and I'm actually developing my own role-playing game system with my brother. And as part of that, in the character creation aspect, we actually have 20 disabling characteristics that you can choose to roll a dice and have that disabling characteristic for your character. And the reason and this is useful is because it makes you act differently and have very specific goals or motives or reactions to things which makes things interesting so whether it be through role play or storytelling or comic book writing or whatever flawed characters can be powerful characters also if you're interested in uh, my nerdy tabletop role playing stuff you can uh, check out the link on the screen and in the description to go check out my role playing group on youtube where we play every week yes this is a shameless plug also uh, those 20 disabling characteristics that i mentioned are in the the uh, description so if you want to have a look at those and maybe try rolling one of these d20s to see what you get when you make your own characters you can have a play the third point I want to talk about is your character's inhibitions. And by this, I'm referring to what they are willing to do and not willing to do. To create characters that are interesting, we want characters that are proactive, that do things. We never really like reading books about characters who sit in a room all day and don't do anything. It's boring to read a book or see a movie about a person who's captured by a villain and chained to the wall and can't escape. So they just sort of wait there for someone to rescue them or something. 
No, we want characters who act, who look at what's happening around them or react to what's happening and make a move. If they're captured, make them come up with a plan to escape. And sometimes if your character isn't specifically an overtly active or extroverted personality or someone who jumps into the fray, you can have things happen around them that force them to react. So for example, if your character happens to be someone who stays in their room all day and doesn't do anything, what would they do if a media struck their backyard? All of a sudden, there's something that they kind of have to act around. What would they do if their wife left them and cheated on them? Or if someone came in and murdered their family? I know this is all very depressing stuff, but you get the idea. It forces interest and action and events to, to unfold and stories to be told. One of the masterful things that George R. R. Martin does that he's very famous for is having no qualms killing main characters. But one of the reasons this is interesting is because in doing so, the other characters, the other main characters react. They are forced to act or do things or respond emotionally or to make choices. And then also how that affects us as the viewers is that we don't know who to attach ourselves to. So it keeps us constantly judging and watching these characters actions and, and building expectations and hopes and, and all of a sudden having them crushed and learning not to have expectations and hopes. It's a very interesting sort of cycle. And him writing his characters and stories like that makes us nervous and uncertain and most of all, interested. And the fourth thing I wanna talk about are your characters' motives. Give your characters plans, give them a history, give them loves and hates, make them feel and make them react. I plan to overthrow the king's hand. To overthrow a king would be too overt, would make too many enemies. But to be in a position of such power, of such responsibility, would facilitate my desires beyond imagination. I want to leave for good, but some of the clients and colleagues I have are, shall we say, overly attached and unforgiving. And uh, if I happen to do things the wrong way or upset people, I might be in a bad place. And on top of all that, the love of my life works at one of my homeless shelters in downtown. I can't visit her or even look at her sideways on the street without becoming the laughing stock of the office. It's ridiculous. I want to get clean for my son. Be a proper dad with a job. But I am in debt to some very angry people. And they're looking for me. Put yourself in your characters' heads and have an internal dialogue that's constantly running so that you can think and see and feel how they might think and see and feel. Also, be careful that your characters aren't too much like you. It can be quite natural to put ourselves into our artworks and our characters and our worlds and stories, but it can be a really fun and challenging exercise to create characters, worlds and stories that are totally different to what we would want or do or choose ourselves. Before you put your character in the world and write their story or draw their comic book or create the animation telling their tale, make sure to really build a rich foundation to, to work from and move forward from. Build a history and really define a character's personality and surround them with other characters and other events that have happened so that you have that to draw from and then have emotions and events to kind of recollect as you develop your characters that will help influence their actions and make them interesting as they continue to be proactive characters through your story. And the other thing I wanted to mention is to keep in mind that your characters are never finished. If you finish a character or if you've made them and they are the way that they are, all of a sudden you set yourself up on a path of being boring because after some time, they're gonna just be the same and nothing changes and it's all of a sudden uninteresting, even if the concept was interesting to begin with. I encourage you to keep this in mind and evolve your characters with your story and every now and then throw a spanner in the works and make something big happen or change. One of the major lessons I've learnt through my 
ultra nerdy aforementioned pastime of tabletop role playing games is to let my character act as that character without reservation. I have my personal interests and wants for the story that might be taking place, but my characters might be very different to my own and I, without any bias, always go with what the character would do, even if I think it would benefit me or my character in the long term to do something else. The reason I do this is because in being true to the character that you've created, whatever happens in the story, for good or ill, whether it be in a book or comic book or animation, it's all good. It's all interesting storytelling. And the very last thing I'd encourage you to do once you've created interesting characters and worlds and settings is to test them out, really push them to their limits. When you're writing your stories, let your characters really go on the roller coaster. Give them triumphs and give them heartbreaking failures. Take them on a ride and show us what they can do. And in turn, your audience will be taken on a ride as well. That's pretty much all I have to say in terms of what I like to keep in mind when it comes to creating interesting and memorable characters. I hope you've enjoyed it. And as an afterword, I will mention that creating interesting and unique characters is really important and important to learn to do well and can be really fun, but is part of the whole package. So I would encourage you to keep in mind that there's plot and setting and that there are other characters and side characters and that there's development of the plot and the character's motives. And then of course, there's the quality of your depiction. And if you're a writer or a comic book artist or an illustrator or an animator, make sure to be constantly refining your ability to portray your story and your character characters as masterfully as you possibly can and always seek to improve yourself because the result will be that your characters will be forever more interesting and enjoyable to watch. At the end of the day, as creative people, we all love watching our heroes on the big screen or in our uh, devices or in a book. And in line with that, there's so much satisfaction to be had in creating your own worlds and stories to take other people on your adventures with. So I wish you the very best of luck in your craft, whatever it is, keep creative. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, I fare thee well. See you later. See you later. I'll see you later. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel to see new content every week. Check out more of my stuff by clicking the annotations over there. If you want to support my work and get a few goodies for yourself, head over to my store for archives, eBooks, and get yourself something nice. If you're looking for a great place to collaborate, explore, or share your own content, head over to newgrounds.com. That's it for now, and until next time, see you later.